Number one and number six still captures the imagination. Wake Forest and Virginia meeting each other in stride to determine a conference and national frontrunner. Welcome into the broadcast booth, Zeeland Shannon alongside Virginia great Patty Foss. Uh, amazingly, in a matchup between two top six teams in the country, the stars are both underclassmen. First, for Wake Forest, it's the sophomore, the super talented sophomore, Omir Fernandez. Well, that's right, Zeon. For head coach Bobby Muse, when he talks about his recruiting classes, he talks about reloading. And the sophomore, Omir Fernandez, such a good example of that. An electric presence out on the left wing for these Demon Deacons. He loves to cut in on that right foot, and he'll look to run at the likes of Prosper Figby in that Virginia back line tonight and see if he can create some chances on an individual basis. For Virginia, it is the reigning ACC Player of the Week, and even more impressively, the freshman Daryl DK up top for the Cavaliers. It's making the difference. Well, that's right. Daryl DK picked up an injury early in the preseason for these Cavaliers, and since he's come into the lineup, he's made such a big difference. The, the Oklahoma State Gatorade Player of the Year as in high school, he is such a big physical presence in and around the box for the Cavaliers. And as of late, he's found a knack for a goal. He's getting in great spots and getting on the end of, of those wide crosses from the likes of Simi Nakoro and Nat Crofts. We'll be right back with the opening kick next on ACC Network Extra. Welcome back to Clackner Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. Wake Forest, Virginia, just moments away as the two teams are taking the field right now. What formations they will be taking? We'll have a look first for the Demon Deacons. Well, so important early on here that the freshman Alberto Catanacci gets together with the, with the veteran Sam Rabin. Catanacci making his first career start tonight alongside Rabin making his 86th. They'll have their hands full with Daryl DK up front for Virginia today. It's an interesting time for Catanacci to come in on the road against the number six team in the country. For Virginia, it's a more familiar look. Well, it's so important for Abubakar Keita and Prosper Fikby tonight that they do well in their individual battles. Omir Fernandez and Aristotle Zaris on the wing for Wake Forest, so dangerous. So, so, so in running at them individually, they'll be forced into some tough battles tonight. And it is a formation when you're talking 3-4-3 that can be exposed if you have people attacking the flanks. The goalkeeper matchup that we have for you is one of varied experience. Andrew Cassis Mundet on the Wake Forest side is someone that brings to bear the Wake Forest record in goals against average from last season. But he, of course, is not starting today as the only switch that we thought we had identified in the Wake Forest lineup is not present. Andrew Cassis Mundit is not there. That's Pannenberg. We'll get more on him in a second. But Colin Shuttler, redshirt sophomore for Virginia, is in the net. He's been the number one all season for the Cavaliers. This is his first year in that role, and it was a hotly contested role early in the year. Well, Shuttler coming. Not too sure who was going to be the starter between him and the transfer, Marcel De Silva. He started the season very hot. Two defensive player of the week honors in the ACC and as of late maybe a little bit shakier so so important that he becomes composed early on in this game for Virginia. Bobby Muse keeping close to the vest about the Catanacci change we talked to him yesterday also close to the vest and the fact that the redshirt freshman Dominic Peters is his goalkeeper today not the junior former Barcelona youth player as we kick things off in Charlottesville Wake Forest in the gold and black Virginia in the home whites with navy lettering. What are you looking for for these first couple of minutes? Well, in such a big game as the one is today, so important for both teams. They're going to feel each other on the first few minutes, not to give anything easy and, and not, not to put yourselves in a hole early if you're both, either one of these teams today. For Wake Forest specifically, what do they have to do to win? Well, Wake Forest, such a good team in possession. Virginia will try to press them, try to impose their will on Wake Forest. So important for Wake Forest that they keep the ball and they make Virginia play to their liking here early on. You see that battle taking place already. Virginia, however, will be trying to do this, Patty, to win. Well, Virginia has got to push the pace. They're so athletic and so good when they can hit you on the counter. For Wake Forest, they have to be very cognizant of the speed that Virginia has, especially in wide areas, and Virginia will, will look to press Wake in deep areas early on. Two interesting changes to the Wake Forest lineup, but some still the same. Peters in goal, Catanacci in the back line. Rest the full lineup 
for Wake Forest is Aristotle Zaris, Bruno Lapa, Brad Dunwell, Joey Desart, Omir Fernandez, Logan Gadula, Eddie Folds, Machop Chol, and Sam Raven. For Virginia, outside of Colin Shuttler in goal, it's Prosper Figby, Henry Kessler, Abubakar Keita, who's the number one freshman in the country, according to Top Drawers Soccer, Simeon Okoro, Joe Bell, Irikozi Danasiano, Daryl DK, Nathaniel Crofts, Gabriel Happy Kamseyu, and Robin Afamafuna. Ball laid out wide, and here's Virginia trying to use some pace to attack, but Danasiano lost the balls, giving it to Omir Fernandez. And it's Corral, the possession going Wake Forest's way in the very early stages. Well, and Virginia looking early, dropping deep, letting Wake Forest have the ball in midfield and seeing if, if they can just lure them in and, and hit them on the counter here early. Virginia's in deep. Rabin in possession, the captain's armband. He started every game in his four years with Wake Forest, now a senior ball over the top. Keita ushers it to Shetler. And Shuttler given plenty of time to pick his next move. A Virginia native. And Shuttler in the Cavalier number one. Battle up top between DK and Katanachi. Perhaps the sub, uh, the change with Katanachi coming in is to counter, to counter DK. Fernandez, a running ball down the wing for Lapa. Did he let it roll too far? He did. And that goalkeeper change, Dominic Peters making the start as a freshman in a game on the road against the number six team in the country. What well, is going through his mind out there? Well, Peters, so much experience with, with training with the Argentine national team and the San Jose Earthquakes Quakes first team. He's played under some really experienced coaches in Connor Salcedo and Brandy Chastain. So he's he's been in some big moments, but this certainly a huge one on the road, top six matchup. And for him to get his composure and confidence early will be so big for these Demon Deacons. Matchup Chol offside. The ever reliable Andrew Cassis Mundet has disappeared. Dominic Peters, you bet that when Virginia head coach George Geldenvach sees Dominic Peters run out, he's telling his team to shoot perhaps a little more. Long ball looking for DK. Popped over the top of Rabin, who does well to keep it away from Okoro. Flipped into the middle. Bell cuts in front of Lapa. He's played a ball for Crofts. Now Okoro on the edge of the 18. Searching for something. Shooting lane closed down by Rabin. The ball corralled, funneled to Lapa, who's touched his way by Joe Bell, the Kiwi, and now the Brazilian Lapa in space. Lapa, if he can wait this ball well, he has Fernandez in the left wing, but he struck it too far. And you can see early on, both teams still in that feeling out process. Some errant passes, so just a little bit uh, maybe of nerves showing themselves here in this big matchup early. Get a look at the Wake Forest head coach, Bobby Muse. Talking to him yesterday, the big discussion about how the constant expectation is there, not looking past one game at a time. I tried to ask him about what they were looking for for the rest of the season. He said the rest of the season is this Saturday. Trying to pass that mindset on to his players. In space, Gadula has four assists this year, looking for another Afamafuna in front of him. Gets a foot in, now a Coro twirled around by Gadula. Kessler, sophomore out of New York, New York, a massive presence in the middle of Virginia's back three. Keita, you see Virginia looking for DK consistently, consistently on these long balls, but he's been unable to corral them thus far. Well, and if DK can match up with Sam Rabin, he's going to have a little bit of the edge physically uh, on, on the senior. So for Virginia, can you get the ball into DK, and can he hold those players off and, and let players for Virginia get in and around him in the box to start to build play in the attacking third? 
You think about the size comparison. DK is 6'2", 225 pounds. Rabin just a 6 foot, 165. Advantage DK in that respect, but Rabin with the experience in aces and spades. Off Mafuna pressuring Dula. Kadanachi. Played two years in the Superat in the second flight of Sweden before coming to Winston Salem. Chol, very well done to Bruno Lapas, giving it back to Machop. Chol, flag is up. The flag is up, and it was close. Brand Wilson. And we'll get a look back at it here, Zealand, but a very, very good job here from Abubakar Keita, the freshman. He's outmatched two, two to one. He holds his ground well and then just steps at the last second to find Chol offside. A really good play here from the freshman. I mean, number six in white, and he does hang up enough to put Machop Chol just off sides. So the first action for Brad Wilson today, the near side assistant. Far side assistants, Carl Kumer, they're under the direction of Jaime Herrera, who roams the middle. Nearly eight minutes gone, and there has been a sharp energy to the game, but no clear chance. Happy comes Seyu checking back. Both of these teams using a couple of freshmen that are very highly touted. Happy comes Seyu, who's one of the midfielders from Virginia, one of those players. Of course, Abubakar Keita and then DK. For Wake Forest, it's more off the bench, but with the same effect. Joe Bell settles the ball. It's a wall pass to Keita, mistouched. And Chol has it to Lapa. Running room now for Zaris. Taking on Kessler to his left foot, closed down by Keita. And Gula keeps it moving to Rabin and now Kadanachi. This is one of the few times already early in the game Wake Forest has managed to back Virginia all the way in. Well, and you can see the amount of respect that George Galnach and his staff have for these Demon Deacons in how far they've, just, they've elected to sit back. They're trying to get Wake Forest to lull themselves to sleep and then hit them on the counter, but Virginia certainly dropping deep in their own half in that low block here to start. Wake Forest's defense has been comfortable in possession to add to the issues. And you see how deep the wingbacks are for Virginia. Robin Afamafuna, Iracosi Danasiano dropping alongside that back three it, it, to make a block of five so difficult for these Wake Forest wingers to find space in wide areas where we've seen them be so dangerous all year. Afamafuna trying to push up into space, but he opens up an avenue for Aristotle Zaris to run inside, lays it for Chol. The Sudanese forward pulls by one with a good bit of skill. But Kessler has cleaned up the mess, and that hit Chol last Virginia throw. The sun has peeked its head out now in Charlottesville. The clouds beaten away to heighten the spectacle even more. And the RPI, these teams are two and three. Wake Forest at two, Virginia at three. The coaches poll is what has them at number one and number six. It is Virginia's senior day as scheduled, but because of the hurricane, Notre Dame will be played here on Tuesday for Virginia. But still an emotional time with the families in attendance. Machop Chol pressuring Keita. And then the two number sevens do battle to a Virginia throw. DK battling with Dula, but it's the help from Saris that sees the ball away. Dunwell helping out his central defender to help get the ball free. Katanachi. Wake Forest very comfortable in its own half. The 
feeling pervades now that the initial energy of the game has settled itself and a chess match seems ready to ensue. Virginia will look for similarly comfortable defensive possession, but Kessler, pressured by Chol, hurries it along for Abubakar Keita. Simeon Okoro, Afamefuna overlapping, but Okoro, the New England champion in the 400 meters in high school, now a senior trying to use that speed that remains. He will be checked aggressively by Wake Forest. Speaking of checking aggressively, Scholl through the back of Kessler. We've talked about the head coach of Virginia, George Galnovich, a few times already into his 23rd season. He certainly has a ton of experience in big matches like this. Well, and in big matches against this Wake Forest team, so much respect from George Galnovich and his staff towards Bobby Musa and the job that they've done in down in Winston-Salem. So definitely a very experienced crew on either sideline here today. Kessler from his center defensive position probing. When that happens, Joe Bell holding middle check back. And Zeal, we talked about Virginia and how deep they elected to drop one Wake Forest in possession. Wake Forest also dropping a, a bit deep, having that line of confrontation at the bottom side of, of the circle. They're, they're looking to lull Virginia to sleep maybe pick up an errant pass and then hit him on the counter just, just as Virginia is doing to them. Coro going one, two with Bell, but he overhit it, done well with great craft to Desart. And Wake Forest has solidified control. And Wake Forest has more bodies in the middle of the park formation wise. Perhaps make it a bit easier to sit back and keep everything checked. Plenty of time for Dominic Peters to get himself comfortable. Looking for Machop Chol. A battle won by Prosper Figby instead. Keita didn't know that Fernandez was behind him. Fernandez has gotten around to Bubakar. Keita shoots. Shetler saves. Waiting for it, Machop Chol. And the Sudanese born forward has launched Wake Forest into an early lead. In the 14th minute, and there was the turnover, Patty Foss. And we were just talking about Wake Forest, their line of confrontation, and looking to jump on a wait, on a Virginia mishap. Here it is. We talked about Omir Fernandez and how electric he is out wide. A good initial save from Colin Shuttler and Irikosi Danasiano. A step late on Machop Chol and, and the sophomore there just to clean it up and give Wake Forest the 1-0 lead early. Shuttler almost able to hold it. Machop Chol definitely onside as he registers his fourth goal of the season. Omir Fernandez making the difference in the mistake to the incredibly highly rated freshman Abubakar Keita. Virginia trying to respond a long ball up to DK. The number one team in the country with the advantage. Afame Funa has drawn a foul a yard off the corner. And a silly foul there from Logan Gadula. Robin Afamafuna with his back to goal on the corner of the box, and he, he gives up a bad foul there. We've seen how dangerous Virginia has been on set pieces all year. A very, very dangerous spot here for Joe Bell. And something that Bobby Muse has talked about, that Wake Forest cannot give up set pieces because they just are not a very big team physically. Virginia is the exact opposite, and all the big bodies are in there right now. And we saw Afamafuna from the other side of the box against Clemson rip one. It'll be Joe Bell instead. He shoots, and Dominic Peters answers his first phone call. And a good effort there from the New Zealand native. And, and up to the challenge, Dominic Peters here early in his first start. These are some safe hands. He seemed to have it read, was anticipating the shot once Joe Bell was approaching. It's the type of form that will land you some time with the Argentinian national team system. Peters. And I just put the announcer's curse on him. Be a Virginia throw. It's important now, Zealand, that this young Virginia team does not get rattled. Giving up a goal early off the mishap. So much time left to be played in this game. And certainly, this is a Wake Forest team that has shown they're, they're capable of giving up goals. So for Virginia, can you keep your composure and not get rattled early? Simeon Okoro trying to garner a touch. He cannot. It'll be Peters to send it the other direction. A goal from the high pressure for Wake Forest. 
Almer Fernandez winning it. Machop Chol finishing it off after Shuttler saved the first attempt well. Virginia trying to settle in a whistle from Jaime Herrera. Wake Forest, you mentioned the shoddy defending that Bobby Muse has been very open about with his team, but you're not number one in the country without being able to put a lot of balls into the back of the net. Uh, and they have so many dangerous options that they can beat you with. Not only Fernandez and Chol, but Zaris on the, on the right wing. Bruno Lapa with his nine goals, eight assists, assists this year. And really some key reserves off the bench. Justin McMaster, really, really pacey, four goals on the year. And so this Wake Forest team, especially as an attacking unit, capable of beating you from a lot of different places. Something that Bobby Muse is talking about is being able to produce those nation-leading 43 goals from a lot of different sources. Machop Chol, one of those sources in a big way today. Shepler with Chol bearing down on him. Absolutely blasts one, DK. Stifled by Rabin, Okoro. Back for Keita. Outside of the one break forward chance for Wake Forest. The match has been tame. An interesting note from Wake Forest's last two contests, both wins against Boston College and South Carolina, is that the, De the Demon Deacons were outshot in both contests. They're just a very clinical team able to take their chances. Well, in big games like the one today, there's so there's so little in them. There's going to be so much of the game played in possession in one's defensive half that both teams really looking to find that opportunity and, and capitalize on the mistakes of another, just as we saw there from Fernandez and Chol early. Fernandez. Desart has fought it outside to Aristotle Zaris. Done well. Plenty of space for Folds, who's barely been involved in the forward action so far. Virginia very deep right now. Chol trying to turn on Keita. Puts his hands up, no foul, but a scuffed clearance for Afamefuna. He's kept it with Wake Forest. Gadula. Done well over the top, little far for Chol. Coro trying to get by Aristotle Zaris. And it was a handball. Took a second for Aime Herrera to get the call in. Let's see Virginia appeal for this right away. And it was handled quite clearly. As we set to enter the 20th minute of play, do you see any changes that either side need to make, Patty? Well, for Virginia, they haven't really found anything going forward. When when they do have the ball, it's around their back three, and the back three has been limited in, in hitting long balls towards Daryl DK. Can they get their midfield a little bit more involved, get Joe Bell on the ball, and, and see if you can get something going forward in the attacking half? Kate's able to clear his own deflected cross. Trying to atone for the earlier mistake. He just didn't know Omer Fernandez was behind him. Desart. Wake Forest more than happy to take the open space in the field. Uh, and Virginia looks flat, to be honest. Zealand, after that goal, they, they seem a little bit shaken and, and not really comfortable when they're in possession. Ball tipped through. It's uncomfortably close for the Cavalier defense to his streaking Aristotle Zaris. Almir Fernandez with a great bit of control and then a teasing ball a bit too far. Chop Chol has been very active and in the face of Virginia keeper Colin Shuttler today. Another bomb from Shuttler, but once again, DK unable to find a space. Desart won the header. An 
and I think you nailed it when talking about the comfort in possession. Wake Forest is comfortable. Virginia is not. Well, and at this point, Wake Forest up 1-0 on the road against a top 16. No reason to do anything but what they're doing right now. Move the ball around, make Virginia chase, and at some point you're going to start to wear down these white shirts, and then the chances are going to come for, for the Demon Deacons. Probing side to side movement as Rabin seems to have picked his target. Run from Bruno Lapa. A cut inside from Gadula from his right back roll. And it's funneled back out by Happy Gamseyu. Desart on the 1 2. Trying to beat Joe Bell. He's opened up a foot of space. Flips it across. Aristotle Zares had a decent look, but he couldn't get his technique right. And this is good work from Wake Forest. Very patient, working the ball wide. And Zares finds himself in another good spot with a step on Robin Afamafuda and a good block there from the German. Oh, he didn't miss hit it. It was Afamafuda that was able to get in the way instead. Struck fairly well by the freshman Zares with his left. High pressure this time, Bruno Lapa giving Machop Chol a bit of a rest. Abubakar Keita sends it aloft. It's too far for everyone except for Sam Raven. And yet again, Zion, Abubakar Keita looking, relying on that deep long ball to Daryl TK. It's so important that George Galovich gets in his ear, gets Joe Bell showing for that ball, and see if you can start to find a little bit of possession because those hopeful balls to the front line not really working for Virginia here in, in these opening 23 minutes. Unable to capitalize on the, the size advantage of Daryl DK. He's being gang defended. Katanachi fouled by DK. All handshakes afterwards, but certainly a stern challenge. Saris overlapping. Machop Chol. Bit of a deflected pass, and Bell can't catch it cleanly. DK flying in, shielded off by Desart. Raven. Saris. And the appeal for handball given seemed a convincing call. Happy comes Seyu leaving an arm down. Danasiano to Crofts. DK shovels it towards Okoro, but instead finds Aristotle Zaris. And you can see just how far Wake Forest is pushing Virginia. Daryl DK forced to come 15 yards into his own half just to get a touch. Rare poor touch by Fernandez, makes up for it with an excellent ball to Machop Chol. Twirling around, he couldn't find solid contact. And Shuttler behind it. Creativity of Fernandez. Well, and a good flick here from Omir Fernandez finding Chol. Kind of muffs the shot a bit there, but again, Wake Forest having their way in possession, uh, running at, at this Virginia back line. Keita again with the long ball, looking for DK. This time, Daryl DK's found some space to work with against Sam Rabin, both holding each other, and the foul has been given against Wake Forest. And we talk time and again. That's the ball that Abubakar Keita has just decided to go with over and over to DK. If, if you're Sam Raven, you cannot allow yourself one-on-one -on, -one on Daryl DK on his backside because he's such a physical presence that you're going to resort to doing this, pulling the shirt, trying to get a little bit of bump on the big man. It's important that he gets a second defender when that ball's in the air and try to double down on DK and see if you can win it right back. He's given the space to take the first touch like that. It was probably the best decision for Rabin to just go ahead and hang on. There was some holding going both ways, though. Hard to deny that. It's the same pairing with Bell and Afa Mefuna. Now Crofts will be brought in. Well, and a little bit of a gray area here for, for Virginia. It's a very long way to take a shot for Joe Bell. The wind is in his favor, but can you maybe serve a ball into those big bodies on the back post? Tried the shot from first uh, first time from closer range, and Peters seemed to read it. If you can catch Peters guessing again, then the ball across is away. 
Peters trying well, to Wake Forest with no player in that gap. Maybe you hit one on the ground just across that pe penalty spot. Certainly a lot of options. Afamefuna will have a go at goal. And he put it comfortably over the bar. Interesting decision there. With so many options, it's hard to second guess any particular one. Well, if Amafuna hit a screamer against Clemson just outside the box last week, maybe reeling a little bit of confidence from there, but certainly you're not going to test the goalkeeper from, from that sort of distance with that effort. Change first on the Virginia side. As Simeon Okoro, who'd been running all over Kingdom Come, will make way for Daniel Steedman. And Steedman will give this Cavaliers team a little bit of a different look. He wants to drop in in front of that Wake Forest back line, get, gather the ball, and play a little bit more in combination and possession, see if Virginia can start to find possession, a little bit of a sustained rhythm in the Wake Forest half. Steedman trying to bring those active legs to bear on Sam Rabin, who's trying to yo-yo him. Now to Gadula in tight spaces on Afamefuna, who fouled him. And Gadula. Shaking up for a moment, almost a contact issue of the eye, but he seems fine now. Figby. Space for Donaciano. Crofts heads to the corner. Crofts, isolated, chance to bring it to his left foot, looking for Steedman Gadula. Dispatches it for a corner, the first to the game. And a little bit better in possession for Virginia, getting the ball wide to Nat Crofts and putting in a dangerous ball here that Gadula does well to deal with, although a little bit awkward there from the right back. And tailed towards the defender late. And this, this is an area, Zeeland, that Virginia does have the advantage on the set piece. So many big bodies with Prosper, Figby, Happy Cam, say, and Henry Kessler in the box. See if Joe Bell can put it in a ball in, the, in that area. Bell. Right about six yards out in a crowd. And a hand rises up to see it away. It was Peters. It wouldn't have mattered. It's a foul on Virginia. That was a mosh pit on the edge of the six-yard box. And we're going to look back here on so many bodies in the box. Looks like Daryl DK called for the foul, maybe just wrapping around his defender from the front side, but, but certainly a tough call there from the center referee. DK was going down, and he took Katanachi with him. Rabin rises above, knocks it for Aristotle Zaris, who's been given it back by Gadula in space. Keita in front of him. Zaris draws three defenders and flips it out to Dunwell. There's space in the far side of the field for Wake Forest. Fernandez tried to cut in on Crofts. The Crofts got a foot in, now has it back. Crofts looking up for DK, just past an outstretched foot. More promising, perhaps, for Virginia. It looked like Wake Forest might find another goal before the half a few moments ago. Well, a, a little bit for Virginia, but still they're being forced so deep that when they are in possession, not a whole lot of places to go with the ball except long and trying to find Daryl DK's feet. And DK having to drop so deep in the midfield that when he has the ball as that point person, there's, there's not a lot of options going forward for Virginia. Catanachi fouled by Crofts. Is it a game where Virginia will have to continue to try and use as much depth, bringing in more players like Steedman for fresh legs to try and be able to run forward? Well, if Virginia is going to be forced to chase the ball with Wake Forest having so much possession, then yes, they're going to have to go deep into their bench because they're expending so much energy here in the first half hour of this game that it's not sustainable. And a team of Wake Forest quality, when they have so much of the ball, they're going to find ways to break you down. It's only a matter of time. It's also perhaps the heavy legs of both these teams played on Tuesday. And Virginia has Wake Forest coming up this Tuesday as well, which is another massive ACC matchup. Uh, Notre Dame, excuse me. Wake Forest, of course, is right in front of us now. So a lot of things to think about for George Galdovich. The life of a coach, of course, is never easy. Well, Notre Dame will come in to Charlottesville on Tuesday very hungry after giving up five second half goals last night after holding a 2 nothing lead uh, and losing 5-2 to two to Virginia Tech. So certainly a lot to play for here in, in the last week in the ACC. Peters draws Steedman and sends it along. 
Abubakar Keita. That's right out of play. Gadula fouled by Steedman, who has been rampaging all over. And he will draw a yellow. Gadula popping it over the top of Steedman. Cleverly draws the foul, and Steedman follows through. Um, and we'll get a look back on it here, but Steedman just a little bit late in arrival, and Gadula does, does a good job to pop it over him and then maybe give the referee a little bit of a sell job. But Steedman, with a few fouls right off the bat, finding himself in the book for a, a persi persi persistent infringement there. Saris sliding in off of Mifuna. And Dunwell, uncharacteristic miss pass to Crofts. Down goes DK in a heap. Katanachi stepping into him. Gives Jaime Herrera a little wag of the finger. I didn't leave too much on the big man. We will see. Uh, and just clips DK there on the break. Maybe a little fortunate there not to, to see a yellow card for a professional foul, but that's better from the big man, Daryl DK, in, in possession on the turn. Katanachi and DK, the two freshmen, certainly finding themselves in the game. DK battling. He didn't know where the ball was. Hit him in the back of the head. He got around Sam Rabin. And perhaps the most promising opportunity for Virginia, and Daryl DK didn't even know about it. Well, and again, Sam Rabin finding himself in a 1v1 battle with the big physical Daryl DK. If Abubakar Keita is going to continue to hit this ball over and over again, he's going to have to get Dunwell dropping in a little bit deeper to front Daryl DK and not allow him to be exposed in that individual battle. Raven had him handled the first couple of times, but should draw Dunwell's attention soon. Two very experienced players between them. Dunwell with it now. Back to Katanachi. Well, if you're Bobby Muse, I wouldn't be surprised to see Sam Rabin and Alberto, Alberto Contanacci switch here moving into the second half because so much of Virginia's play has been through that left side and, and Abubakar Keita sending that ball forward. Contanacci certainly a, a bigger body and, and maybe a better matchup for this Wake Forest Demon Deacons team on the big man, Daryl DK. Desart hustle off the ball by Bell. Colin Shuttler sends it back the other way. Crofts. Katanachi has Daryl DK bearing down on him. He's come right through the back. Katanachi knew he was there for sure. Rabin. Steedman covering a lot of ground to allow Daryl DK a bit of a breather defensively up top. Rabin. They're comfortable using Peters. Hooked it a bit, kept alive, dangerous for Katanachi right now with Crofts on him. Had Peters come out, took down Nathaniel Crofts in the box. Not a play you see very often, but allowed Katanachi to swerve away. Wake Forest is now on the break a bit. Justin McMaster's gotten it back too far from Omer Fernandez. What do you make of this play? You get a good look at it here. Nat Crofts, such a quick player, and Katanachi and, and, and Peters both new to the starting lineup. Maybe not too much in the chemistry department for, for those two, and a little bit of a nervy moment there for the back line of Wake Forest. And need Wabia coming in to spell Daryl DK up top. He is the number nine in theory and in practice. Plays virtually the same role and being honored on the senior day today. Let me put it to you this way. If you're in charge, are you calling that a foul in the box? I don't, I don't necessarily think so. No, certainly not with the Katanachi in, in possession and just a little bit of a 50-50 ball there. Keita sees it away. Aristotle Zaris keeps it moving quickly, done well. Lapa. Off the knee of McMaster and then off the face of McMaster. And Virginia now has it. Nwabia trying to touch around Rabin, whose anticipation was A+. Plus, was waiting for the ball. Folds back to Omer Fernandez. And a stern play from Hoppy Kamsayu to see it out. Played off by Lapa Fernandez. 
in his creative element. McMaster with a dummy for Lapa. Kessler not fooled. The one-two play given away by Happy Kamseyu. Gdula running ball for McMaster, has Keita in front of him, shields for a goal kick. Another change coming for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And it's a familiar one. Isaiah Parente, a top 100 freshman in the country, relieving Bruno Lapa. And Parente, the man who took Lapa's place in the starting lineup when Lapa out last game with serving that red card suspension. A player who enrolled in the spring semester and brings so much quality to this Wake Forest midfield. Lapa, the man with all of the accolades, but hardly miss a step with Parente out there. Afame Funa into a Virginia space. Not for long, Katanachi there. Hoppy Kamseyu! Well, he got all of the ball from about 40 yards, and that's not exactly what Dominic Peters was expecting. But, and it'll be good to get a look back here at, at the effort from Happy Kamseyu. On this flick, if Happy Kamseyu can just slip a ball for Nat Crofts, he's in on goal. I, instead, he elects to go, go for goal from 40 yards and, and not really testing Peters there. Perhaps a, a freshman mistake or a freshman move. From the Virginia midfielder, the ball did go out. The flag is up. And a Virginia throw taken by Prosper Figby looking for Nwabia. Took it right off the forehead. Battle down the far side of the field. Possession trading hands by the second. Happy Kamseyu had it for just a moment. And then Parente closed down on him. Certainly lost for size, Parente, but he forced the ball back to the Virginia defense. Down the wing, Danasiano. Tackled off by Folds, and he did it well enough to keep the ball for the Demon Deacons. Now to the space in the near side of the field. Aristotle Zaris, a weighted ball. He was looking for Fernandez, but instead found the forehead of Prosper Figby. It ends up rolling all the way to Colin Shepard. It's a bit haphazard right now, but the score remaining 1-0. Off the goal from Machop Chol. And Virginia finding a little bit more of the ball here in the last 10 minutes. Steedman dropping deep. Happy Camseo getting on the ball. So, so a little bit better from Virginia as they move into the latter half of this first half. Speculative ball for Catanacci, but he handles it well. Figby stepping in front of Omer Fernandez. Danasiano with a lot of space, a rare thing in the Wake Forest half for Virginia. Closing in on the 40th minute of play. With the shots even at four, Wake Forest has hit the target three times. The only situation critical, only clear-cut chance, I'd say, that's come either way was the goal capitalized on by Chol. Nwabia spins off of Katanachi, but Rabin was filling in behind to help. Gets it back from Folds, a bouncing ball, and they're happy to trade. Folds, scuffed it a bit, Joe Bell, can't get it over Desart. Now Folds. Space all of a sudden for Crofts. Crofts, the step over, leaves Folds in the dust, but his cross wayward and might have stayed in all the way for a throw. That's what Crofts can bring to you. Well, and this is a better stretch for Virginia. They're finding the ball in good spots in their attacking half, and Wake Forest Coach Bobby Moose has alluded to it time and again in the past few weeks, but the individual defending from the Demon Deacons leaving a lot to be desired. So, desired. so for Virginia, can you find the ball in wide areas more and run at this Demon Deacons back line? Because especially in the past 10, 15 minutes, they've looked shaky and they look uncomfortable with Virginia running at them. Kyle Holcomb and Alistair Johnston have come in. Brad Dunwell and Aristotle Zaris making way. Alistair Johnson tabbed as the leader off the bench by head coach Bobby Muse to try and perhaps rally the minds of the team for these final six minutes of the half. With Wake Forest up a goal. The ball popped in, down for Nawabia. A surprising amount of space working against Rabin, but he just put it over the bar. Solid ball in from Irikozi Danasiano. 
And again, Iracozzi and Asiano, Nat Crofts, finding a lot of time on that right side for Virginia, able to take a touch, look up, and, and pick out Wabia, who, who will certainly want a chance like that uh, back. Wabia played two years at Dayton before transferring. It's been a regular feature since joining the program. Abubakar Keita straight up in the air in a bit of a battle. Holland Rula come in for Omir Fernandez to give Fernandez a breather in the last five minutes here. It's Wake Forest using some of its depth. Keita wanted to go back to Kessler. The option taken away. He's got to go long. Raven checking to Wabia and off his line Peters. What have you made of Dominic Peters in his first start here? Well, he's looked calm, composed, and, and a, a big part of this back line for Wake Forest to start, not only in his shot stopping and presence, but, but in possession he's done well and, and looked the part certainly through the first 40 minutes for, for Wake Forest. Dula back for Raven. Crofts now doing the pressuring up front with Wabia and Hoppy Kamsayu dropped deeper. Figby stops Rula's advance. Now Donaciano. A large expectant crowd at Klockner Stadium. Has certainly seen an intriguing affair. A match that has had very few lulls in energy. Figby handles the throw. And it's put out of play by a venturing Hoppy Kamsayu. This is a Virginia program that has come to expect success. Something that both head coaches talk about. Both head coaches talking about how both of these programs have come to expect success. Desart has stayed down here. Seems to be working his way up, but in some discomfort. A key part of the midfield working next to Dunwell. The upset Jaime Herrera did not see the foul or take enough action. Herrera has stopped the clock at 314. Mike Forrest head coach Bobby Muse wondering if he is going to be called to make a change for his veteran midfielder. See if we can pick out what happened to Desart. Well, it just looks like Prosper Figby leaves leaves his stud in there a, a bit in Desart with the, with the big swing. Probably just a little bit of a stinger there for the junior. Touchdown by McMaster, and he's got it back in a crafty ball through from Parente. A 1-2. Wake Forest turning the style on before Afame Funa ushers it away. Kyle Holcomb, the freshman, getting involved in it as well. Rabin. Now McMaster. Gadula, on a 1-2 layoff. Parente goes tumbling. Joe Bell crashed into him. No whistle. And Gadula's roamed all the way across the field. Holland Rua makes a move to his left foot. Ball across, stabbed by Figby. Returned to control by Parente. Master trying to isolate Keita. Twirls to his right foot. Forced to give it up. Desart seems fine. Plays a wonderful ball for Holland Rula, who's controlled well in the face of Donaciano, but Crofts intercepts the ensuing pass. One back by Parente. Settled on the edge of the box. The shot blocked by a diving Henry Kessler. It's fished out in the corner by Keita. Will actually be a goal kick if the ball ever actually goes out of play. And now Keita and Gadula exchanging a few pleasantries. Two players giving all they have to try and get to this ball. Well, well done from Keita to play it off Gadula and then just getting a, a little bit tangled up there. Uh, a little bit of extra uh, extra bump there from, from the freshman Keita, but 
Dula have been really, really active here in the first half. A real bright spot for Bobby Muse and his crew. Uh, of course, exited early from that ACC championship game last year against Virginia with the red card, but but really been doing a great job getting up that right line, right uh, sideline for for the Demon Deacons and, and causing some issues here for Kata early. Bring up that game. The ACC championship where Wake Forest took it in penalties. Two teams that all the players that aren't freshmen or transfers very familiar with that result. They also played in the spring, and both head coaches keen to downplay that result. Virginia picked up the win in the spring. Ball into the box. Tamely up into the sky, brought down by Kessler of all people. Trying to turn to his left foot. Goal kick, Alistair Johnston doing the defensive duties. Final 20 seconds, and it looks as though they will pass at Dominic Peters' pleasure. What do you make of this first half, Patty Foss? Well, both teams came out early, wanted to feel each other out. You can see the amount of respect that they're both giving each other and how deep they've elected to drop when the other's in possession. The difference in this game being the one mistake from the freshman at the back of Bubakar Keita, capitalized from a very experienced Wake Forest team, and we'll head to the break 1-0. That's your score. The number one Wake Forest Demon Deacons up on the number six Virginia Cavaliers, one to nothing. And it's Machop Chol off of Omer Fernandez, shot saved by Colin Shuttler that makes the difference. We'll be back at the half on ACC Network Extra. Welcome back to Clackner Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. The number one Demon Deacons defending that ranking here at one of the cathedrals of the college game. Zeeland Shannon alongside Virginia great Patty Foss. It's been a very interesting first half, one of the most interesting conferences in the country. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the scores from last night in the ACC, and there were some surprises. Well, and so much parity on every game day in the ACC. That was on full display last, last night, especially in South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame went into the break 2-0 lead, only to give up five goals to a Virginia Tech team in the second half and drop that one 5-2. A Notre Dame team that will travel to Charlottesville this week on Tuesday to take on Virginia. So really a lot to be played for here as we head into the last week of the season. Now getting into that last week of the season, we can take a look at how the ACC tournament is shaping up so far. Those buys are ever so important. Well, the top four seeds will receive that first round buy. And in a conference like the ACC, where each and every game so difficult, Having a day off and, and able to rest moving into the tournament is so important, not only for the ACC tournament implications, but moving into the NCAA tournament. Any amount of rest that you can gain it, as we hit in the postseason is so important for these teams. You see Virginia towing that line at number four. Wake Forest is the number one seed, the top four getting those buys. Here are the full ACC standings. Well, and you see the, the amount of quality teams, especially in that coastal division, these crossover matchups like the one we're seeing this afternoon, really important because they can make a huge difference moving in the standings in, in a final week. Again, those top four spots, the most important. We'll be back to recap the first half here from Charlottesville after this on ACC Network Extra. Welcome back to Charlottesville, and this look at Wake Forest threatening Virginia in this first half. Well, right from the start, not a ton in this game until this mishap from Abubakar Akeda. Omir Fernandez does such a good job taking it off the freshman, and a good effort, good initial save from Colin Shuttler, but Machop Chol in a good spot at a, the right time to put Wake Forest up 1-0. And as we move in, into this second half, so important that both of these teams, as they continue to feel each other out, can they, can they, can they capitalize on the one another's mistakes and, and, and find that second goal in this game? Virginia highlights coming up at, after the break at, here in Charlottesville. Back once again in Clockner Stadium in Charlottesville. Bring it back into the broadcast booth with the Demon Deacons up 1-0 against Virginia. Zeeland Shannon, uh, Virginia great Patty Foss to my left. This, a game that Virginia did not start out well in. You saw how Wake Forest took the lead. Now Virginia playing its way back in. 
You're going to get take a look at that now, but how also can they go find that goal in the second half to make this real interesting? Well, it took Virginia a long time to find their rhythm offensively. They relied on balls like this one from Abubakar Keita, looking for a Daryl DK early on the long ball. They started to get a little bit of that rhythm in the, in, in the second half of that first period, at finding wide spaces and getting some, some chances from wide areas in, in the box. We'll be back. Kick off the second half next on ACC Network Extra. Back in Clackamas Stadium once more, waiting in moments the kickoff to the second half between number one and number six in the country. Take a look at stats from the first half. Wake Forest, of course, with the one nothing lead, but very even generally across the board. Well, and that stat line very even. The stat not on their time of possession. Wake Forest so good in possession in that first half, making Virginia chase for long periods uh, of the game. We will see what kind of tempo the second half sets as Daryl DK, a towering 6'2", 225-pound freshman, sizes up the second half of the massive V in the middle of the field. Arriving pregame, just a beautiful scene. Well maintained, all the credit to the field staff. Joe Bell with the first long ball of the second half. DK has battled his way through Katanachi for it. Now we did get some news in the halftime break from the Wake Forest side of things about where DeShields and Casas Mundet are the two normal starters that are absent today with Katanachi and Peters in play. They are both day to day with lower body injuries. And certainly two mainstays across that Wake Forest back line. A, a little bit of a question of wh where they were and, and those questions being answered. But for Coach Bobby Muse, both Peters and Katanachi done well in that first half. Tanasiano threatening ball across. Seen away by Gadula. Afame Funa. Wins the header against Sari, settled by Steedman, shot held by Peters, who once again gives a good account of himself. And a good start here for Virginia in the opening minute. Getting deep in that Wake Forest half, and Daniel Steedman finding the ball in and around the box, gets it gets it wide, and a good clearance there initially from Gadula, bounces back to the top of the box, Steedman finding it again and, and testing Peters from distance. Peters had a beat on it the whole way, but Virginia, with perhaps its best sequence the entire game, Less than one minute into the second half. But Wake Forest is nothing if not even keeled. Chested down by DK. And to, st to open this half, Zeeland, Coach George Galinovac flipping his formation into more of a 3-5-2, pushing Steeman into that midfield, see if they can find a little bit more of the ball, and having Nat Cross and Daryl DK play as more of a tandem uh, up front for the Cavaliers. Tactical changes afoot seem to have created something of a back four defensively. Off of a shot comes just wide. My goodness. Aristotle Zari's got all of that one, and he had a window to put it away. Had a very worried Colin Shuttler between the pipes. Well, not, a, not only a good effort there from Zaris, but it looks like Colin Shuttler gets a little bit of a late beat on it and, and almost squeaks in there at the far post. It's one of those plays that in one moment became incredibly uncomfortable for the whole of Virginia's defense. That back four I mentioned seems to be Kessler and Keita in between and Afame Funa and Figby on the outsides. Ape Kamsu checked off it by Katanachi, who we talk a lot about, or I've talked a lot about how Dominic Peters has given a good account of himself. Well, Katanachi stepping in for DeShields, the regular in the middle of a fantastic defense and talent-wise for Wake Forest, he's done very well. Well, we knew how highly touted Katanachi was coming in as a freshman, already having that pro experience. He's shown why he can he can be inserted so easily in that Wake Forest back line. Big physical presence. He's done well here for the Deeks. Folds. We have time to pick his target. Goes long for Desart, who's fully recovered from the spikes he took earlier. Virginia comes away with it.
Ball settled by Afamefuna as Virginia's eased its way forward. The opening four minutes seem to have ticked Virginia's way, but Wake Forest is a team capable of weathering long periods of not being in control and coming out A-OK. -okay. Tanasiano has settled, but won back by Omer Fernandez. And would you say Wake has lived up to its key to the game we provided them at the beginning thus far through 50 minutes of play? Well, certainly in the first half, Wake controlled the pace of the play. Opportunity now, Lapa charging forward. Chol settles edge of the box. The shot seen away. Figby Fernandez couldn't get on top of it. And Wake Forest returns fire with a volley. Just over controlling the pace of play and then some ushering in a fine chance to score. Uh, and to start this second half, Aristotle's Zaris come alive here on the on the right side for Wake Forest. A little bit unlucky there for Omer, Omer Fernandez, just getting under that one and pushing it over Colin Schottler's goal. All right, became a surprisingly open shot the way it settled for Fernandez. Now on the Virginia side of things, we said they needed to attack with pace, counter, put pressure in the forward areas. Have they been able to do that so far in your estimation? Well, not, certainly not in the first half. They were forced back deep so much in that first 45, not able to, to get forward once they were in possession. It's interesting to see Coach George Galnovich flip to five in the midfield here in the second half, inserting Daniel Steven in the central midfield, see if they can find a little bit more of the ball and, and force Wake to defend just as they, they were forced to do there in the first. Bit of an uncomfortable landing for Prosper Figby after the challenge from Fernandez, but he seems all right now. So with Crofts pushing up, Joe Bell now is basically the right wing back for Virginia. But in defense, he does not drop all the way. It's almost two formations at the same time, Patty. Good ball from Shetler. Not a decide by Donaciano. Folds wins it from all the who's. Katanachi's best option, Peters. Raven on a rampage. Ball cut out by Kessler. Nathaniel Crofts Jr. gets it rolling, and now all of a sudden, Ericozzi Donaciano has Fernandez behind him. Great recovery from the Wake Forest forward player. Steedman dummied through for Donaciano, not fooled, Folds. Steps into it once, misplays the second. But Tanasiano was already retreating. Well, we talked about Crofts out on the wing. What a job he's done to start the season with six assists already. But now being inserted in more of a central role, will he be able to get on the ball, play off Daryl DK, and start to run at those center backs, Alberto Cantanacci and Sam Rabin? We talked a little bit in the first half uh, about the, the struggles that Wake Forest has had in individual defending for Nat Crofts, such a speedy player. Can he run at those two and, and see if he can cause some problems? Saw the moves he was able to put on. In the first half, the one in particular that sent Folds the opposite way. Outside of that, Folds has been rock solid defensively. There's a chance here numerically for Wake Forest with Kessler dealing with Bruno Lapa. And his clearance, a missed touch from Aristotle Zaris. He was working with fine margins. The 14th minute goal of Machap Chol, the difference. Two players down in a heap. No whistle either way. Here comes Wake Forest. Flipped inside to Lapa. Virginia throwing its weight around of no consequence. Zaris, what a challenge by Henry Kessler. As Aristotle Zaris had burst out of the crowd in a threatening manner, now Denasiano eyes up the field trying to pick out Daryl DK. Came in on the back of Katanachi. And DK, that's a lot of weight moving very fast. Katanachi brave to put a foot in. Well, it'll be good to get a look back here because, well, first, Henry Kessler with, with a fantastic challenge has to time that one to perfection or, or else he's going to absolutely crush Bruno Lapa. But Virginia looking to push the pace of play a little bit more here to open the second half. Tanasiano to his favorite right now back to the left. Ties folds in a knot as well. But cleared away. Wake Forest back to Tanasiano. Folds. Fouled it. Or no throw. Jaime Herrera saying it's a throw in. 
Danasiano was quiet for large periods of the first half. That not happening here in the second half. Crofts folds, able to keep his position. Back for Crofts. Danasiano in space. Bending ball too far for Steedman. Settled by Zaris. The freshman challenging freshman. Down the right side, Zaris has found space and he's found Machap Chol. Chol's back heel. The only likely target, Afa Mefuna. A long run ahead by Aristotle Zaris. Prompts a first time ball back from Shetler. Headed out of play by Abubakar Kato. Joe Bell. What a move! Joe Bell. Bursting out of the midfield, but he's stifled by Rabin. Now Steedman, Katanachi coming in. Steedman lunging in front of Rabin. It falls for Gadula. Now Afamefuna. Down the wing for Cross too far. There is an energy to this second half we didn't necessarily have in the first. A quicker step from both teams. Well, and when we talk about Virginia pushing the pace of play, this is what they have to look for. Pressing Wake Forest deep, not allowing the Deeks to have the ball in possession, to feel that sort of comfort that they were experiencing in the first half. And you're starting to see the results of that. Virginia much more active and forcing Wake Forest into some sillier mistakes in their own defensive half. Joe Bell. The tackling from both teams has been much sharper. I think the result, DK and Katanachi. All over each other once more, and the foul's gone on the Swedish freshman, Alberto Catanacci. Virginia with a chance to get the big bodies forward, takes it quick for Denaciano and Joe Bell. Whistled back by Jaime Herrera, who says he had not blown ready for play or was allowing Wake Forest to set. That, of course, all in Herrera's jurisdiction. And it looks like he whistled it back for, for an extra yard, M moving the ball back an extra yard, which is a little bit a little bit of a, of a stickler there. But nonetheless, Joe Bell, look for him to whip a ball in here, see if he can find one of those big bodies for Virginia. Everybody up except for Afame Funa. Ball to the edge of the six. Peters with one long arm. Ushers it away. He has really handled balls across particularly well, timing. I think in this game, every single challenge correctly, the goalkeeper for Wake Forest. Well, and Dominic Peters has looked really confident there between the pipes for Bobby Muse. If there's one area that he is a little bit supreme to Casas Mundet, it's in that he does have that 6-3 frame, and he is more comfortable dealing with those aerial balls across the face of goal. And right on cue, a ball across the ground at Katanachi step right in front of him and clear it away. Tight window. To work in for Danasiano has it taken away by Fernandez. Fernandez with options far side of the field. He's found space, but he can't find Machap Chol. Had Chol and Aristotle Zaris as Wake Forest was piling it down the right wing. Abubakar Keita takes a breather. Has played Barafa Mafuna. Gadula. Long running ball, but there's a lot of time for folds to collect. That time expires quickly with Crofts bearing down. Dunwell, who we've not seen a lot of, resettles it for Wake Forest. Not seen a lot of in the second half, I should say. He was all over possession wise in the first. Desart. Lapa. Step in from Figby. No whistle. Lapa looking for one. Figby's gone down. Took a challenge from Aristotle Zaris that will warrant a yellow for the Wake Forest freshman. And we'll get another look at this, but it looked like he came in behind on Figby. Well, Zaris uh, certainly comes in late here on Figby. It starts here with Figby. A hard challenge on Bruno Lapa. Maybe a foul, but, but certainly Aristotle Zaris there deserving uh, to head into the book there for the challenge on Figby. I thought he just... Hold him down by the shoulder, actually came in with the boot as well. Perhaps the appropriate response after Figby's heavy challenge on Bruno Lampa. Kessler will get us restarted. Steedman. Flat ball too far. 
for anyone. Folds down the line. Lapa. Tame back to him. He's drawn Joe Bell forward. Now ahead, Figby nods to the side. Figby controls after Machop Chol's header. Couldn't find one of his teammates. Afamefuna. Could be seeing one of those long balls, but he keeps sizing it up, not sending it. Now here it is. DK just by Cabrel Happy Kamsu, and it's set up a counter. Desart with two options looking for Omer Fernandez. Figby cuts it out brilliantly. It's a bold touch with Fernandez bearing down. Well, and you can hear associate head coach Matt Jules telling Eric Cozidanasiano to start to push the pace a little bit when they are able to catch Wake Forest. Can they push it? Can they see if they can find him on the counter and start to create some chances in that manner? Well, this is a match that has grown, but it's one mistake from Abubakar Keita losing it to Omir Fernandez. The save by Shuttler tapped in by Machop Chol. That's made all the difference, and that's really how Wake Forest goes about winning their games getting into these battles and always seemingly coming out on top. Speaking of battles, DK spun away from three Demon Deacon defenders. Now Keita, shot was blocked. But Keita steps back in strongly, won the ball off Bruno Lapa. Now Nathaniel Crofts, a bit short for Donaciano, headed away by Folds. Touchdown by Bell, but right to Dunwell. Dunwell's got it back from Folds, working in a phone booth near his side. Now Bell steps in as two defenders. Ushered off of it, strong challenge from Steedman, who's on a yellow. And it's drawn the whistle from Jaime Herrera. This is turning into a very physical, physical match. Joe Bell battling with Steedman and Folds. Or Dunwell and Folds, and Steedman ended the party. Fished towards Gadula. He's gone down in a heap, was fouled by Kessler, left one in. Now, with the active pace we've seen in this second half and the size advantage for Virginia, would you say that the physicality for the Cavaliers? is working in Virginia's favor or Wake Forest's? Well, if Virginia can impose their physicality in, in the right areas, it certainly will work in their favor. Right now, it's becoming a little bit of a chippy game, which I'm not sure plays to, to either and, and more, but certainly the insertion of Daniel Steeman in the midfield has thrown Wake Forest off their rhythm a little bit. They were having so much of the ball in the first half through those central areas. Now Virginia, with extra numbers, are, are really enjoying a, a, a line share possession here at, in the first 15 minutes of the second half. That's it for the goal scorer, Machop Chol. May see him return, but for now, it will be Justin McMaster, the sophomore out of Kingston, Jamaica. Saw him a good bit in the first half. Less of a big body than Chol, but very active. Prosper Figby put that in the 10th row. Leaving no doubt. And now we have a couple of balls for Folds. Katanachi, DK given a hard charge at Peters, goes right over Daryl DK. Back to Katanachi. Katanachi pressured by Donaciano. Donaciano's won the ball from him, and Virginia has numbers. Hoppy Kamsu, though, stifled by Katanachi, who atones for the error and slows things down. Donaciano, ball through the middle is blocked by Desart. Now Dunwell charging in, has won it for good. Saris, one back by Steedman. What a twirl, he's gone down. And that will be whistled. And a man who's also on a yellow card, Aristotle Zaris. Ball over the top looking for DK. Battling the whole way with Katanachi, and he's that's the first massive show of emotion from the front man for Virginia. Thought he had it. Well, and, and certainly some emotion there, frustration from the freshman, but maybe for a good reason. It looks like he and Katanachi going at it. Not not a whole lot in it for me. And really, if you're going to give a foul, both both guys doing a lot of the same thing. So you can see the frustration on the face of that man, Daryl DK. But a, a really active first 17, 18 minutes here for Daryl DK in the second half.
Peters, giving his team time to find position, and Ime Herrera had to get everything sorted. Not out of play, and Folds finding himself throwing it in a lot today. Lapa. McMaster isolated on Figby. Hasn't beaten for pace, but Figby got a foot in. Popped over the top, Folds content to let it run. Throws it in behind DK. Katanachi, done well. Well, he does well under pressure. Lapa. Strong step in on the left side by Keita. Now a chance to run for Keita. Crofts lays it off for Steedman, and that took some of the steam out. Desart and Gadula able to recover. Steedman popped over the top, has Crofts and Donaciano to work with. Crofts sets up a straight cross. Seen away by Rabin, who was too tall for Daryl DK. Now Donaciano. Working against Folds, has Bell overlapped, and Asiano to his left foot, shoots! A wonder goal for Eric Hosey, Denasiano, and we are tied! I tell you what, Zeal Shannon, you talk about a game, ACC powerhouse, two top six teams in the country, and that's the sort of goal that we're expecting come in. Nurikosi Danasio does so well cutting inside to his weaker left foot and absolutely unleashes a peach of a goal to the upper 90 of the far post. 1-1 here in Charlottesville. Absolutely stupendous. From Nurikosi Danasiano, there isn't a hope or a shout for Dominic Peters. Danasiano strikes with his first, if you would believe it, career goal to and, tie this game. And for a guy at Tanasiano, on that opening Wake Forest goal, he was a step late in coming back to get on Manchop Troll. you got to think that's been eating him all game. In this second half, been very active, and that's the sort of individual effort that a player of his caliber is capable of. A fantastic strike from Iroquois Tanasiano. A sophomore out of Roanoke, Virginia. He made his look count. And the next five minutes will tell us a lot about the rest of this game. Uh, and this game is starting to open up in a way that it, it didn't do in the first half. Both teams throwing some shots at, at one another. Virginia looking a lot more potent in the attacking half after making that switch to, to five midfielders. And, and they've really started to frustrate Wake Forest. Wake Forest not able to string the sort of passes together that they were doing in the first 45. Folds blasted by DK. It was a matchup of disproportionate sides, and Folds got the worst of it. I hope he's okay, as he's still bent behind Wilson, the assistant referee. So Virginia's made the tactical change to get into this advantageous position. What now must Wake Forest do? Find head coach Bobby Muse to try and counter that. Well, Wake Forest needs to start to get their outside backs a little bit more involved. Eddie Folds, Logan Gadula, we know the kind of quality that they have in those wide positions. When there's so many numbers now in midfield, can they start to spread the ball wide and find these guys? Certainly, Eddie Folds there taking a tough knock from Daryl DK. They'll, they'll, it's a good sign that he's up and about because he brings a lot from that left back position to this Demon Deeks team. McMaster goes down. Everybody seemed to expect a foul call on Kessler that did not come from Jaime Herrera. Now Omir Fernandez coming in on Donaciano. Donaciano comes back, and all three exchanges are judged clean by Jaime Herrera. He's certainly letting them play after that sequence. Afame Funa has gotten in behind Zaris, but he was hassled enough that it gets clear for Rabin. Zaris zips by one. Now has Lapa, who's come all the way to the far side of the field, trying to switch all the way for Almer Fernandez, battling Donaciano. Fernandez has won it, going back for Lapa. A two-man game on either sides of the field. Zaris looking for Lapa. Joe Bell crunched by his own player. But he did get it clear. McMaster. Working against Kessler, who's been drawn out. 
on defense. Zarius with a lot of space edge of the 18 kind of scuffed it. Shuttler able to hang on with Fernandez bearing down. Miss hit there from Aristotle Zarius. Well, and that's a better stretch of possession for the Deeks moving forward. So much, so many emotions running high in this game. For, for If you're Wake Forest, you have to be able to settle down and start to find the ball more in possession, just as they did in that sequence, because we've seen how good that there's no better team in college soccer than Wake Forest when they do find possession of the ball. But in this second half, they look a little bit flustered, and Virginia having their way a little bit, especially in the physicality arena here. That was a promising sign for Wake Forest to be able to battle Daryl DK off the ball as he's been getting better at better at bringing it down amongst Wake Forest's defenders. Running ball, Figby to it first, puts it out of play. Sub coming on either side. And it's one of strategy in both. Nuabia relieving DK as the number nine. And Omir Fernandez is going to come off as well. And I would expect both these changes to be 10 minute max. Let them both get a, get a breather and get back out there for, for the final maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes of this game in a fresh way. It's Kyle Holcomb who's a regular out there for Wake Forest. Played in the first half as well. But there are a few players in the country as explosive as Omir Fernandez. It must be one of the, the breather you're just talking about. The chance now for Wake Forest is a set piece. Free kick from the near side of the field that Bruno Lapa, the attacking midfielder, will size. Shuttler has not really been tested coming off his line yet in the Virginia goal. Cavaliers seem to be zoning it out. Lapa into a crowd. Shuttler claims it well. Acquits himself as Dominic Peters has on the other side. High ball from Wabia has the advantage on folds, runs it off for Donaciano perfectly. Katanachi closes well. Donaciano now has drawn a crowd. McMaster takes it cleanly. Inside for Dunwell. McMaster keeps his run going, looking for Desart in the middle as a counter to that, trying to settle the game down instead of break forward. Aristotle Zaris disrupted by Keita, but keeps control. Desart cuts by Steedman. Desart. Is played by Holcomb. Afame Funa. Chested side by Kennedy Nwabia, bouncing between a couple of Demon Deacon defenders. And that's really good work there from Kennedy Nwabia, using that big frame, getting the initial touch, and allowing Virginia to relieve some of that pressure and, and work some numbers into Wake Forest half. Crofts. Holcomb brought in for the fresh legs to try and bring a bit of pressure. Alongside Lapa, ball over the top. Wabi is searching for it, but Peters had it picked the whole way. And Peters zips it for folds, but he'll get it right back. Virginia keeping the formation so much farther forward than the first half. This read in the air by Aristotle Saris. Long throw by Keita. Nwabia trying to put one in the mixer, but Dunwell the only one there. Waiting for the ball to touch the ground. It does at the foot of Bruno Lapa. 20 minutes to play as Steedman steps in front of Desart, cuts it away. Nwabia, Steedman and Crofts made almost the exact same run, and that really killed the attack from the start. Long service the other way from Folds. Figby. As Holcomb zipping around and ball back for Shuttler. Receiving from our perspective looked as though Holcomb had a beat on it, but Shuttler was there comfortably. And nodded out by Dunwell. Patty, you've already talked about the change in formation leading to more Virginia success. Has there been anything else that has led to Virginia looking like it has the edge here in the second half, being able to apply pressure further up the field. 
Well, that's just it. Virginia's been able to press Wake Forest deep in their own half, forcing them into balls like the one we just saw a moment ago from Eddie Folds. The, that long ball is not Wake Forest brand soccer. Wake Forest wants to play on the ground. They want to play through those two central midfielders, Dunwell and Desart. And in the second half, they haven't been able to find that space in, in possession and, and wear Virginia down. So the high press for Virginia really very effective here in the opening 25 minutes of the second half. Shipped over the top, McMaster. Looking for Holcomb, who's got in behind that pressure. Popped to the middle. Lapa, a chance to touch and shoot. Bruno Lapa. Left to Rue the chance. He had a window. Uh, and you'll get a look back here at it for, for Wake Forest. But a really good job there from McMaster. Chipping one forward for Holcomb. Holcomb finds Lapa. Here, Lapa, a little bit in, a, in a, the middle, goes for, goes for the for the volley could have slipped Zaris but but certainly a, a fantastic chance there for Bruno Lapa. It's a lot of class from the freshman Kyle Holcomb in his first significant involvement Barrente relieving Lapa after that play perhaps for another breather uh, breather is overtime is now looming of course golden goal overtime that could end in a draw after two overtime periods at men's college soccer rules. Foul going against Anasiano as the two number 11s do battle. Is this a game that you would say is headed to the overtime periods at this point? It seems to have settled into the 1 1 scoreline. Well, wow, so tough to know. Both these teams so potent, so much individuality on either roster, as we saw in that goal from Danasiano, that hard to say that this one's going overtime with 17 minutes left because it'll just take one moment of individual brilliance maybe to get steal three points for either side. Joe Bell trying to produce that right now with a roaming run all the way up on Folds. He's won a corner. Just the second of the entire game, both for Virginia. And it looks like it will be the Kiwi Joe Bell to take it. Such a key cog is just a sophomore in the Virginia midfield. Player that was in the top drawer of soccer, best 11 last year. The freshman best 11, that is. Has a lot of big targets. Into the middle, headed down in front, and a bicycle goal for Steetman. It's the freshman out of nowhere. Well, we've talked all year about how dangerous Virginia's been on this set piece. Cabrell Happy Camp Seu goes up, finds the initial ball here, but Daniel Steedman, unmarked in the six yard box, does so well just to get his foot on this one and push it past Peters for the 2 1 lead for Virginia. The athleticism of Steedman to react quickly. There's not much Peters is able to do. Steedman left all alone inside the six yard box. And then Cabrell Happy Camp Seu. The player that rose above the rest to knock it down to him. And right, now we're going to see 17 minutes left on the clock for Virginia. What sort of changes does George Galdovich make? This has been such a defensive minded team all year. Is he going to drop some more numbers back into the back line? Try to frustrate Wake Forest and, and bunker in for these final 17 minutes. See if he can see this game out. Steedman, the number 79 recruit in top drawer soccer coming in this year. His second goal of his career in the season. And arguably the biggest goal of Virginia's season as Nwabia did pull back on folds. But the large crowd in Klockner has made its presence felt here in a second half where Virginia has turned around a 1-0 halftime deficit. And to be fair, referee Jaime Herrera, this game has been very fast paced, very quick moving, and he hasn't been the most consistent with his calls on both sides of the ball. If you're a player in this game, all you want to know is where the line is. And for the center referee, he's been a bit inconsistent in what he's decided is a foul and isn't a foul here today. Holcomb whistled for the latest infraction. He was none too pleased. As Joe Bell, who earned that corner and then took it. He's played an integral role, I think, in both goals because it was his run that opened the space for Denasiano on Virginia's opener. Happy comes you. Bit of a wall pass for Denasiano in a similar area goes for Happy comes you. Virginia threats again, but Katanachi rises to the standard, puts it out for a third Virginia corner. We'll see a replay here. What you're not going to see is the big man Kennedy and Wabio rising up to find the first header in in this sequence. 
Kenny and Wabia not getting a ton of minutes, but he's done so well in these eight first eight minutes in the second half, being that big physical presence, being able to knock balls down and allow plays like that for Cabral, Happy Cam Seo being slipped into the box. Bell in no hurry in the 75th minute. Virginia up 2-1, having just scored off its second corner. Now faces its third. Bell, similar area, challenging ball. Peters stays home, and it's knocked away by Gadula. Prosper Figby did not have much to play with and ends up just putting it out of play for a deep throw. Well, and a smart play there from the big senior, just knocking out for a deep Wake Forest throw instead, instead of risking giving up possession and allowing Wake Forest to, to break on that counter. Holland Rula returns for Wake Forest and Daryl DK returns for Virginia. Folds will make way for Rula on the Wake Forest side. Rula a more forward option. Well, the like for like switch, Nwabia coming off. You mentioned he's had a great game today. And Dale, we just talked about it, but Kennedy and Wabia, that was a 10 minute shift. He allowed DK to, to catch his breath. You won't see anything that he did in that 10 minutes on the stat sheet, but such an important run of time from Kennedy and Wabia, allowing Virginia to, to relieve a lot of their pressure in that long ball to him. So, so a really, really good shift there from the senior Kennedy and Wabia. Katsunachi sets up a challenge between Figby and McMaster. McMaster stays down. Figby won the ball. McMaster does seem okay, is recovered. Now Holland Rula. McMaster allows Rula to cut down the wing and inside for Desart. Urgency for Wake Forest, and you can see it. Aristotle Zaris. Gadula on the edge of the 18, flips it far post. What a goal! What a goal from Gadula! And we are tied at two. Wake Forest answers the prayer and it answers in style. Well, it'll be good to get a look back at this one. Gadula, it looks like he knows exactly what he's doing. Just chips Colin Shuttler from 18 yards. A fantastic finish there from the senior. So cheeky finding that back post. And Colin Shuttler stuck in no man's land there. And we're knotted up at two. The highlight reel for this one will be full. Logan Gadula, the senior, with his first goal of the season. And it is one he will remember for a very long time. What? Shuttler seemed to realize late he was in a trouble. Well, and, and, and initially it was hard to tell if Gadula maybe just mishit across there, but no, he knew exactly what he was doing. Saw Colin Shuttler in a little bit of a bad position and, and really made the, the keeper pay there on, on the chip to the far post. Uh, what a fantastic goal there from the Wake Forest right back. Done well and happy come Seiyu battling for it. Happy come Seiyu tried to turn the style on. It was one for a moment by Parente. Now it's back with Happy Kimseyu. He's passed it to a space where Figby retreats. Yes, Kyle. Uh -huh. Down the line for DK and it's tailed out of play. It is safe to say that watching the last 77 minutes in their totality, you can tell this is a matchup between two teams that are top six in the country. Steedman. Rolls over one, now flips it back to Nassiano, headed for a collision with Holland Rula, but a whistle before, and it's gone against Steedman. He's picking up a couple of fouls now already on a yellow. Uh, and again, not sure where the foul is in, in that one. Steedman working down the line, but, but our, our center referee, Jaime Herrera, may be feeling a, a little bit of the energy and emotion of this game uh, in, in the blue shirt. Aristotle Zari is getting the assist on the last play. A goal from Gadula. Challenge in from Kessler. Ball falls for McMaster, who's run onto it. McMaster saved by Shuttler back from McMaster again. And Wake Forest, in a matter of moments, has flipped the entire script. And is 10 minutes and change from walking out of Charlottesville with a win. Shuttler did a lot. He could not do enough. Well, and we talked early on about the pace of McMaster. He finds his way in behind that back three of Virginia. Wake Forest resorting to that long ball. Henry Kessler with the initial challenge, but McMaster coming from all the way across. And again, it looks like Iracozzi Danasiano just a step late. McMaster does so well after the initial sh shot from Shuttler to poke that one home and put these Demon Deacons ahead. Looked like Abubakar Keita in his effort to come across and help Danasiano, screamed Danasiano 
and his speed from trying to cover, but a fantastic individual effort by McMaster and really loads of technique to take that second ball out of the air with Shuttler in a similar position. Now then, Danasiano from the baseline. And the ball's seen away by Catanacci. Well, and as special as that first goal was from Danasiano, now that's two plays that have ended in Wake Forest goals in which he has been he has been run straight past. And, and for George Galanach, that's got to be so frustrating when he goes back and looks at the tape because both of those. Now a chance for DK. What a play by Dominic Peters. And a rare miscue in the back for Wake Forest. Now Bell settling. This match far from over, it seems. Hoppy comes Sayu for Bell. Blocked off by Holland Rula. Dunwell. And a whistle. Daryl DK has been sniffing around it all day. Well, you get a look back at this one. Just a little bit of a, a, a errant ball back. And Peters does well to come out and, and beat DK to that one. But that's the sort of play. That's the sort of mistake that, that you can pay for in a big game such as this. The blood is high on both sides. And that can lead to the anxiety and mistakes we've seen Virginia commit. Two goals apiece in a wild shootout of a second half. Figby looking for DK, run down by Katanachi, touched it down well for the Virginia forward. DK was not fouled. And that will get the crowd against Ime Herrera. Need a second look to determine if the call was true, but now McMaster had it poked away to Nasiano for DK. Katanachi in front of Daryl. DK has a swing, and he almost put it out of the stadium. And we will get a chance to take that second look and see if DK was indeed fouled. You know, I, I'm okay with that one, Zeon, from Jaime Herrera. Certainly DK looking for the for that for that call right at the top of the box there. Two goals in two minutes from Gadula and McMaster, the unlikely heroes, but Bobby Muse talks about getting goals from all sorts of places to keep this high-powered Demon Deacon offense going. Keita runs it through for Crofts in behind. A chance to shoot, saved by Peters. The flag is up. The ball went in. The crowd will see the flag in short order. He is offsides. Crofts was offsides, not the finishing touch. Did Keita hang on to this a bit long? He had the option. Well, I, th I think I think he did. I think one step earlier, one touch earlier, and he finds Crofts cross on that slip. But certainly, Virginia still with, with that energy, pushing at this Wake Forest back line, looking for that equalizer, heading into the final nine minutes. Peters. Puts it out of play to settle. See if we can take another look and pick out the offside in the play. It was close, but one beat off, like you said. It's a penetrating run from Caprell Happy. Kamseu leaves it going for Crofts, and Crofts puts it wide. Nathaniel Crofts Jr. And it broke wide open for him. What a run by Cabrell. Happy Campseo out of midfield. Taking on so many Wake Forest defenders. Pulling them in and then a fantastic slip. And Nat Crofts with a golden opportunity and not this one up. 1v1. Misses the frame. He will look back at this game and rue that chance. Virginia with two minutes of high octane pressure. And a match that seems to have one treat more around the corner every time you think it's done. Holland Rule has come off for Folds, who will take the throw in. See Johnston stirring as well, maybe about to come in for Wake Forest to settle things down. DK and Katanachi have been battling all day, tumbling over each other. No foul either, either side. Gadula, eager to get forward again. Zaris, done well. And both teams taking a collective breath after the flurry of chances, the best of which was saved for last with Nathaniel Crofts Jr. And he just pushed it. He took it well enough. Ball shoveled down the line. Joe Bell bodied off by McMaster. Regardless of this result, whatever comes final out of here, a tremendous treat from both of these teams.
Well, this is the best of, of college soccer on the men's side here, here today, especially this second half, so high octane. Both teams throwing haymakers at one another, and, and seven minutes left on the clock, certainly not over by any stretch of the imagination. Alistair Johnston has come in and replaced Dunwell. Strong challenge from Figby. We get no call from Ime Herrera as Folds ended up almost up against the wall in the stadium. DK able to turn on Katanachi as a whole cohort behind him, but DK's taking them all on. Daryl DK to his left foot, sliding in Rabin just enough to put him off. Cabral Happy comes say you back for DK. It's all haphazard at this point, and Rabin has it clear. Tanasiano might find an opportunity in the madness. Isolated against Folds, brings it to his right foot. Zipped across, settling. Crofts, complete miss hit. Sizing it up now off Amefuna with a swing. Blocked in front by Parente, and it's sent away by Zaris. I'll tell you what, Zeeland, Daryl DK full, full speed ahead, running at that back line. Such a scary sight if you're those center backs. Such a big body, and he's done so well in this second half. Letting his individuality shine and, and really been a threat to this Wake Forest back line all day. Cabral Happy comes. Seiyu has really pushed forward in these last couple of minutes. And that seems to have made a significant difference. Down he goes. And there's no call. Aristotle Zaris now with a countering run to try and put it away for Wake Forest. Holcomb rounded off by Kessler. Alan Shuttler. Taking all the space he's allotted, has a massive right foot and will wield it. But missed the target. Not it down Katanachi. Desart keeps it moving the opposite direction. Figby always prone to come in, played it off McMaster. After bodying away Parente. DK. Bell in a pocket of space, pops it over the top. Danasiano zip behind folds. Doesn't have a lot of targets inside. Danasiano just a bridge too far. Enough contact from Katanachi to put him away. And five minutes left on the clock, Zeeland. It's time for Virginia to start throwing bodies forward. You're going to start to see them throw everything they have at this Wake Forest back line. See if they can find that equalizer here in the dying minutes. We've been treated to a spectacle. It was a 1-0 lead at halftime for Wake Forest. Then Virginia jumping to a 2-1 advantage in Wake Forest. In quick turn. Returning to the front 3-2, Almir Fernandez and Machop Chol have returned. Parente and Holcomb gave a good account of themselves. But they're no substitute for the goal scorer and the number one creator of the number one team in the country. Steedman to space for Afamefuna. Not space for long. Aristotle Zaris there for a battle. And he fouled him. Again, there is no extra time added to the end of a half in college soccer. So those four minutes are all that remain for any last plot twist. Figby steps inside. Ahead for Daryl DK. Katanachi reads the flight of the ball. Able to get it back for Peters. Uncomfortably on his left, puts it in the stands. Into the corner for Danasiano. Folds. Right on the spot, Figby with a dummy back for Kessler. Virginia's numbers forward, the composure on the ball so important with a couple of defenders that remain because Wake Forest is not giving him an easy time. Over the top, DK will have a chance to bring this in. Heavy legs on both sides. DK smashed into by McMaster, who's done very well to win it away, and Folds puts it in the stands. Bell, Figby. Pushes into a pocket, looking for DK, but Folds was in front of him the whole way, then Figby. All he can do is challenge, and it's gone out for a goal kick that Peters will be in no hurry to take. George Gelnovac shouting his instructions. Some of his last instructions in this matchup between number one and number six in the country. Bobbled around, brought in by Desart, passing to a space, has folds a step ahead of Danasiano to the spot, but all he can do is put it out. The final two minutes and 30 seconds of one of the finest games of the season in any league. 
Master down the line. Kessler with Omer Fernandez bearing down on him. We'll have to play a tough ball for Shuttler, who settles comfortably. Zips it by Fernandez. Kessler looks to push. Henry Kessler down the line. DK takes it in, battling with Folds. Last off of Virginia. Five goals in eight games for Daryl DK. He has not put his name on the score sheet today and has precious little time to do it. Figby, Denasiano, scorer of a wonder goal, and it's last off of Wake Forest is the call. With a time-wasting maneuver in effect to throw the ball anyhow. Now Aime Herrera has stopped the clock. Have the ability to do that, the cross of the arms to allow him to sort everything with a minute 28 left. Expect Virginia to throw everything it has and Wake Forest to defend with every last breath. A hard fought 3 2 lead. The give and go has Danasiano charging forward into space. Catanacci is ready and will put it out for a deep throw. And look for Virginia to throw all their bodies in the box. Get Nat Crofts over here for the long throw and see if you can find something bouncing down in and around that 18 yard box here in the final minute. Working on this in practice yesterday, the long throw of Nathaniel Crofts Jr. He's the choice. Zips it. DK with the flick on into a crowd. Figby trying to get it towards goal. DK, Steedman on frame, but Peters always behind it. And he will be in no hurry to rise. I had a really good effort here from Daniel Steedman off the broken play. DK does well to flick it down, and Steedman from a really tough angle does well to, to put it on frame. And with the time that is left, it will be challenging for either team to mount a significant thrust. Desart. Sky high for Figby to find. Puts it back, Omer Fernandez, a chance for one last flurry. Goes towards Machop Chol. Picked up by Shuttler, he's going to try and get it started quickly with 20 seconds remaining. The last breath. Looking for DK. Folds. Keep it as high in the air as possible. Joe Bell. Forward. DK. Keita. Will Virginia find one more chance? One more chapter. Keita. Blocked by Folds. That's your game. And a tremendous one it was. Final thoughts, Patty Foss. Well, what a treat this game was from both teams, Zeeland. For Virginia, they came alive in the second half. They threw their best punch at the number one team in the country, but at the end of the day, uh, just a few mistakes in the back for Virginia. Wake Forest, such a quality side, making them pay. And these are two teams that probably have not seen the last of one another. A fantastic men's college soccer game here on a Saturday afternoon. And that's going to do it for us. For Mike and the crew back in the studio, in the fashion sense of Patty Foss to my right, I'm Zeeland Shannon saying so long from Clock.